everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I must say this experience of talking to yourself or talking to just the camera is kind of weird still. You know, because it's still the beginning, but hopefully I'll get used to it. Everyone who has been watching my videos and commenting and liking, thank you so much for the love and support. Today in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experiences as a mixed race person in Kenya. Growing up mixed race is actually a super confusing experience, I think, for any mixed race person. It doesn't matter where they grew up. Because of the split between two um, different cultures, two different races, if you want to put it like that. It doesn't matter where I go, you don't really fit in. When I'm in Europe and I'm asked where you're from, straight away I say I'm from Kenya, Mombasa. But when I'm in Mombasa, I'm still asked where you're from. I'm going to be talking about three experiences that will be perfect examples to show you how confusing this experience is as a mixed race person. Number one, the dress code. Personally, I think it's the main one that kind of troubles me. I get judged every single day. There's not even one day that can go by and I'm in public and people don't judge me because of my dress code. Now, my family is very diverse. Let's put it like that. My uh, father is European and my mother, she's Kenyan coast um, and from the coast there's a lot of muslims so my mother is muslim and all her family um and uh, the majority of people in mombasa are also muslim islam has a different has a dress code for women and men but mostly women right so i'm always torn between wearing european now wearing european is things like jeans tops you know um just short sleeve dresses you know these kind of things and wearing a muslim girl is more covered up more conserved uh, for example right i'm wearing my jeans there you know i'm wearing my top my sandals looking all cute so i'm just walking i stop by somewhere i want to buy like you know i want to buy some fruit or i want to buy whatever i want to buy there and i start speaking swahili now that's a key thing because i speak the language and i speak it with a very coastal accent it's very strong so people know that this person was born here they probably grew up here they were around people who speak this kind of swahili right and when they see me with that swahili and i'm dressed this way they're like ah oh, asa why are you dressed like that can you not just like cover up a bit more know how the rules are in this area what what's 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 going on with you right when i cover up a bit more sometimes i wear things we call dera they're just very long loose dresses not tight at all so you can't really see any shape of the body you can come with a scarf sometimes i wrap my hair in a scarf you know it is considered as being respectful I wear that and i'm walking same thing right i'm walking i stop by i want to buy some mangoes and i start speaking and i don't even start speaking let me just reverse once the back i don't even start speaking it's like oh it's just like okay basically what it means is this girl is white so a white person wants to be african today so it's like okay so if i don't cover up you say something if i do cover up you say something i'm giving a third example there was once i was wearing that dera you know i had my scarf there and i was just chilling with with one of my friends this other guy comes and he joins in our conversation and we're laughing we're laughing and he goes you're so i mean you're so cute and i'm like oh thank you and he's like you know what would make you even more attractive and even more beautiful i'm like oh what he's like if you cover it up even more and i'm like what like <laughs> there's nowhere you can go and it is enough for people you will always be judged example number two this is very funny actually i turned 18 right i was ready to get my id my kenyan id printed and ready because i was officially kenyan left it really last minute procrastination left it really last minute and i had to do it really really quick and i had like five hours to do it before my flight to nairobi uh, my auntie was one of the people that you know one of the local uh, authorities 
and she was showing me around taking me getting me to get my fingerprints done and getting to get you know my photo taken all of this stuff paper signed and she was just dragging me along with her and there were these people that were in the queue and they were looking at me so angry of course because like first of all I don't look like I'm African and the area we went to to sign up my ID it's like in the villages like one of like the proper it wasn't even like in town no it was like in the villages so everyone was looking at me like why why is she getting privileged <laughs> first of all like why is she jumping this queue we've been here standing for hours getting those dirty looks like this mzungu white person why is she jumping she doesn't even need this ID why does she even want it all of these things remember that experience I was feeling so embarrassed because I was just like okay <laughs> number three this is prices at the markets any foreigner doesn't matter where you're from you know any foreigner their prices the prices of the market they always go up for them so if you're let's say a black American you've come to Kenya to explore your prices will go up because they listen to the accent and be like this person is foreign prices go up if you're from Nigeria and you come in and you don't speak Swahili prices will go up but if you are light yeah European and just white in general the prices will go up without even you starting to speak or without you just when they see you from a distance they already know okay today I'm making 100% profit today you know <laughs> prices will definitely go up so for me obviously I'm a bit light when I was younger I didn't I didn't really understand it so I would just pay or whatever you know and then my cousin taught me she was like mm, you shouldn't do that let me show you a trick you go to the market and pretend that you don't speak Swahili just pretend that you're very European you know just be like I like this how much is this and then listen to what they're gonna say and then after they say something then you bring out your Swahili in your proper Swahili accent. And I was like, okay, let's try this. So this is what I've been doing for like the past two years with the shop and I'm like, hey, very nice, I like it. Mm, how much, how much is this? And I'm getting something like 500. I'm like, mm, seriously, and see it in 500. <laughs> basically the accent just comes out and I speak Swahili to them and we start laughing and it's just so funny because they realize that oh this girl tricked me so I walk around buy a few more things and that thing that was 500 I'll probably get sold for like 50 or if I'm buying loads of them it will even go to like 40 or 30 depending but that's one trick that I've learned concluding the video um, summarizing it, number one, being mixed race is very confusing. We'll be confused about what to wear. Will you be an African? Will you be European? But it, even if you try and be either or, you will still be judged. Number two, in terms of getting like your national documents, for me in my case it was my ID, but even if you want to get your passport done or you just want to get your driver's license or anything like this, you will, people will give you those looks. They'd be like, why? Why is she even? Why is she even here bothering? Like the other day, I went to get my birth certificate um, copied again, and there was just this crowd, and people were just looking at me like, ah, oh, this one. And you know, because I have like a German passport as well, it's like, ah, it gets more complicated. And people are like, man, I just want to do get my stuff done and leave. Can you please just let me? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Number three. Um, this is prices. Be careful of this. Be wary. If you're a foreigner and you want to go to like a local market, make sure you go with a local person who lives there and can speak the language and can bargain. Otherwise, you'll be, you know, you'll be, you'll just be, <laughs> I don't know what the word is. <laughs> so much for watching everyone. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about being a foreigner in a different country or if you're mixed race, how your experiences are. And yeah, 